Hi there, welcome to this in-depth video on the use of fentanyl. This video will cover all the essentials, how and when to use fentanyl, what are possible side effects, what is the correct dose, is it safe to use fentanyl while driving or while drinking alcohol, and can I use it when I'm pregnant or giving breastfeeding. I will cover all of that and more. I also made a shorter, more to the point video that just covers all the basics in easy to understand language. You can find that video in the description check it out if it's more suitable for you. Feel free to subscribe for more upcoming videos and let's get into this. First a little disclaimer, this video is meant purely informational, this is not medical advice and if you're looking for medical advice always contact your own doctor. So the generic name of this medication is fentanyl but it's known under several brand names. I list some of them here, Abstril, Actic, Duragesic, Ventora, Eventora, Instantil, Resivit and Pecfent and there are some more and fentanyl is available in tablets you have three forms buccal tablets, sublingual tablets and lozenge tablets but it's also available in nasal spray and in patches or band-aids then what is the indication to use fentanyl? it's used for breakthrough pain so it's used as an extra, extra painkiller which works for the short term in patients who have severe chronic pain and already have a maintenance pain treatment. So how does it work then? Fentanyl is an opium alkaloid and it has an agonistic activity on the mu, uh, mu opioid receptor and when it binds to this receptor in your brain it alters the pain recep uh, perception you have and it will increase the pain threshold. Therefore you will experience less pain, it has a strong analgesic effect and it works sedatively as well. So if you want to use it as a painkiller, always use a step-by-step -step approach. Go to the next step when there is insufficient pain relief, when there are contraindications for one of the steps or for specific reasons like oncological pain, then you always start at step 4 or 5 because it requires a high amount of painkillers. So step 1 always is paracetamol. It's safe, it works effectively, has less side effects and it's cheap, so that's the first step. If this is insufficient, you start an NSID, like diclofenac, ibuprofen or naproxen for example, and you combine it with step 1. If this is insufficient, go to step 3, which is weak opioids, tramadol for example, and again you can combine with step 2 or 1. Step 4 would be oral or transdermal strong opioids, which is fentanyl, which we are discussing in this video, but also oxycontin. And the last step is subcutaneous or intravenous strong opioids, and this is mostly morphine in hospital setting. I also made a video on that if you want to check it out. So, how do you use fentanyl? Always use it when you have breakthrough pains. You take the dose that is prescribed to you, and you take it a few minutes before certain activities where you know you're gonna have pain as well. So for example, when changing your clothes is very painful, five or 10 minutes before that, take the fentanyl and you will have less pain. If you use it orally, uh, it will work within an hour. And if you use it nasally, within five minutes, you will have pain relief. And it will work for seven to 24 hours, depending on the dose you're taking and um, if you're using tablets or nasal spray. How long can you use it? As long as you have severe pain. Your doctor will help you to gradually reduce the dose if necessary. For safety, if you want to drive when using fentanyl, please wait, wait two weeks after starting fentanyl to see what side effects you're experiencing. And if you're experiencing any dizziness or sedative effects, please do not drive when using fentanyl because it's not safe for you. Otherwise, you can start driving after two weeks. For alcohol, please do not combine it with fentanyl. It may increase the side effects you're experiencing and can be very dangerous. and may even lead to coma or death in very severe cases. So be careful. And for food, there are no restrictions whatsoever. So you can eat any type of food when using fentanyl. So for the dose, if you're an adult and you want to use nasal spray, you can use the dose of 50 micrograms. Do one spray in one nostril and um, if you have insufficient pain relief within te uh, after 10 minutes, you can do an extra spray in your other nostril and uh, then you will have maximum 100 micrograms per episode of uh, pain and you can use both sprays every six hours. If you use tablets, buccal tablets, you start with the dose 100 micrograms 
but can go up to 400 micrograms. If this is insufficient, repeat the dose after 30 minutes. So you take maximum 800 micrograms per time and you can do this every four to six hours if necessary. If you want to use sublingual tablets, start with the dose 100 micrograms, but you can go upwards to 400 if necessary. And if again, if it's insufficient after one dose, repeat it within 50 to 30 minutes. Then you can maximally take 800 micrograms per episode of pain and you can do this every six hours and lastly if you're using lozenge tablets use 200 micrograms per time repeat it after 30 minutes if you still have a lot of breakthrough pain and you can do this every six hours so fentanyl is a very good painkiller but it also unfortunately has some side effects very commonly, more than 1% of all people has any of these side effects. So somnolence, sedative effect, dizziness, headache, but also nausea, vomiting or constipation or asthenia and itching. Commonly, 1-10% to of all people will have any of those. So confusion, disorientation, anxiety, fatigue, abnormal thinking, migraine, anemia, neutropenia, taste disorders, weight loss, dry mouth, dyspepsia, uh, there can be some visual disturbances and meiosis, tremor, muscle pain, back pain and allergic reactions. I will not name all the side effects out loud. Feel free to pause the video anytime you want to take a closer look at all the side effects. And if you think you may be experiencing any of these side effects, always contact your doctor to check maybe if the dose needs to be adapted or maybe you need to take another painkiller that is better suitable for you. So uncommonly, the less than 1% of all people might have any of those side effects. Diarrhea, uh, peritonitis, sleeping disorders, mood changes, hypo or hypertension, cough, dyspnea, sleep apnea, skin rash, erythema, microclonus or coordination problems, urine retention, uh, fever, coma or thrombocytopenia. Again, I didn't read all of them. Rarely we see hiccups. Or hypogonadism and very rarely we can see a libido loss and androgen deficiency withdrawal symptoms um, peripheral edema or insomnia so that were all the side effects then the use of fentanyl can also have some interactions with other medications so please be careful for that when combined with alcohol or central depressants like gabapentin anesthetics uh, antihistamines, anxiolytics, opioids or muscle relaxants. Uh, the combination of these medications can increase the depressive effects and the sedative effects fentanyl has on your central nerve system, may lead to respiratory depressions and in severe keys, cases even to apnea, coma and even death. So please be careful. The same can be said, said for the use of fentanyl and sedatives like benzodiazepines or opioids. Again, this increases the sedative effect fentanyl can have on your central nerve system, may lead to respiratory depressions and to coma, coma and death. And therefore, always use the lowest possible dose of both medications for the shortest amount of time and always check on your patient very carefully. Some other interactions are fentanyl and MAO inhibitors, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or NSRIs. Um, combination of those medications can lead to serotonergic symptoms, syndrome, uh, which is very serious and can be dangerous. And therefore, you need to stop using a MAO inhibitor before you can even start fentanyl. Wait two weeks after the stopping, and then you can start fentanyl. When fentanyl is combined with a CYP3A4 activator, like carbamazepine or rifampicin, and I named some others, this can reduce the effect of fentanyl and may decrease the pain killing effect you're experiencing. So take that into consideration. Then, when you want to use fentanyl but you're pregnant, know that this might be harmful for you and your baby. It can lead to an opioid addiction of the fetus, but also to neonatal abs uh, abstinence syndrome when the fetus or the baby is born. So our advice would be not to use uh, fentanyl during the pregnancy, only do so on strict indication, but uh, yeah, be very careful. For lactation or breastfeeding, know that fentanyl passes through in the breast milk to the baby 
uh, may lead to respiratory depression in the baby, but also to other adverse effects like sedation of the central nerve system. So be very careful and we advise not to use fentanyl when breastfeeding. There are some contraindications against the use of fentanyl. So please don't use it, don't use it when the patient has acute respiratory depressions and asthma or COPD, when he had a brain trauma or increased intracranial pressure. Also don't use it when there is hypovolemia or hypotension in the patient, when the patient has myasthenia gravis or when there is any acute pain because fentanyl is only suitable for breakthrough pains. Then when somebody takes too much fentanyl, it can lead to an overdose, which has the following symptoms, so respiratory depression, which starts with bradypnea, but may lead to apnea and coma, loss of consciousness, deep sedation, bradycardia, hypotonia, ataxia, hypothermia, convulsions, and meiosis. So those are the symptoms someone can have when he has an overdose of fentanyl. Then when you see someone who has this, the therapy is intravenously naloxone and you give 0.4 milligrams and you can repeat this dose within 2 to 3 minutes if you don't see any effect. And then my last topic, the kinetic properties of fentanyl. The resorption of buccal tablets is almost 50% and is done fastly. The first pass of buccal tablets is 65% of lozenge tablets is 100% but it's quite slow. Of lingual tablets is 70% and nasal spray is almost 90% first pass. The T max, so the maximum dose in your blood, uh, will be for buccal tablets within for, uh, 74 mi 47 minutes, for lozenge tablets in 20 to 40 minutes, sublingual tablets 20 to 240 minutes, and nasal spray within 12 to 20 minutes, which will work fastest. Then the metabolism is mostly done by liver, by the enzyme CYP3A4, and it is metabolized in an active metabolite norfentalin. Elimination is done by urine, 90% is eliminated as a metabolite. And the time it takes your body to eliminate half of the dose in your blood is 22 hours for buccal tablets, 7 hours for lozenge tablets, 20 hours for sublingual tablets, and 3 to 4 hours for nasal spray. So nasal spray works the fastest but also stops working the fastest and buccal tablets uh, take longest before they are active but also work the longest. So that seems about right. So this was my in-depth video on fentanyl. I hope you learned something. Feel free to subscribe for more upcoming videos. Also made a shorter video. Um, you can check it out in the description on fentanyl. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.